Hello, I'm Brett Nelson. This is the first in a series of tutorials on how to use FlexSim, a discrete event simulation software program. You'll need to download FlexSim from FlexSim.com. This is a 3D simulation modeling and analysis software. It's extremely useful for um, modeling any kind of a process, manufacturing process, but also any kind of a service process. It's quite common in healthcare and in logistics. For my purposes and the purposes of my students, we'll be modeling manufacturing processes. Try FlexSim free. You will need to create a, an account with FlexSim to be able to access the download feature. I have no problems in suggesting that you do provide an email to it. I find there's very little email traffic from the company. Um, they're very good about that. Um, I recommend getting the latest version that's available. So in my case, I'm currently using the 2023 update one. I want to point out that the system requirements for running FlexSim are either our Windows operating system running either Windows 10 or Windows 11. I have had students successfully run this program in both Parallels and in Boot Camp, um, but it does tend to bog the system down. So once they get into more advanced modeling, um, they do find that it runs fairly slowly. So if you don't have a powerful enough Macintosh, you might find that this is a bit overwhelming for it. Once you have FlexSim running on your system, uh, you're going to be presented with this opening screen and we'll go ahead and open a new model. All right, here's where we define some very basic parameters that we're going to use for our model. And the, by default, the system is going to use seconds as the time frame, meters, liters. I uh, it depends on your application, and I think for many of our um, processes, many real-world manufacturing processes, um, they're going to be timed in minutes rather than seconds. Um, so I tend to find that this is a better starting point. You can um, assign any time unit that you want within your processes, but the def it's easier to set the default to minutes at the this point rather than having to then change it each time you enter a process time. You can also start, um, tell it when your uh, the model starts. I like to reflect uh, a classic shift time of 7 a.m. Um, and it'll start with today's date. All right, so now let me just demonstrate the basic dragging and dropping of um, objects into the model and making simple connections. So. Again, I'm going to come over here to this left-hand panel. And um, for my purposes, I'm going to kind of model a basic value stream map. So I'm going to start at the top here with a source. So I left-click to drag the source and release it in my model. Don't really worry about where you place it. We'll, we'll, you can move these things around and scale them and make all kinds of adjustments um, later. All right. In a value stream map, this source of, of uh, this source kind of represents the supplier who provides material into our particular value stream, right? So it's a it's a source of material. Then classically, we would have some kind of an inventory, like a incoming, uh, receiving area, some sort of a warehouse, or maybe a distribution center. So the supplier or the source will supply materials which will uh, reside in this queue or in this inventory location, right? The next element down is the uh, processor. And this is a generic sort of op module that acts as anything that works on material. Now, there are other kinds of processors. I'll get into the some of the variations, depending, so depending on your process, if it's a really simple sort of pass through process where it receives an item, works on the item, and then passes that item along to the next stage, then the processor is what you want. So once the processor 
is finished with the material that it's um, running, it would want to go to, or the material needs to go to another inventory location. So we'll throw in another queue. Very often we're going to have more than one process in a row, so you might need another processor. And let's say it's going now to uh, shipping department. So from the shipping department, um, which is essentially another inventory location, uh, they will pass material out to a customer. And so uh, the, the basic way of doing this in Flexim is to have a sync, which is sort of the opposite of a source in terms of its function. So a source generates material. Uh, and so it adds material into the system, which we can then process. And the sink absorbs material or consumes material. So when material arrives at the sink, it exits the system. Okay. So you can kind of see, I've done this intentionally to create this in kind of the shape of a value stream map. Um, now, this might be a good time to just talk about navigating in this screen a little bit. So um, right now, just my cursor can float around. If I left click and move the cursor, then you can see I'm, I'm sort of shifting or moving the entire workspace. If I left, uh, if I right click, I'm sorry, if I right click and use the mouse, then it rotates the space. So you can see I'm, right, I'm working in three dimensions. And so it takes a little bit of getting used to left to move and right mouse to rotate the wheel or trackball that you've got can do a zoom in and zoom out so once you get more comfortable with it right you'll be able to start navigating a little more comfortably now if you find yourself off in some sort of weird view um, and, you know, sometimes, sometimes I find myself, it's, it's gone weird and I've lost track. You've spun the dial so many times or something like that, and you're kind of lost. So this happens. Um, so what I find is if you, uh, in any blank space, right click, hit view, well, uh, just hover on view, and then you get this little pull down and you can do a reset view. And what this does is switches you back to kind of a, top-down view, just a nice, simple two-dimensional, and it starts us back at sort of looking over top of zero, zero. So from here, I can scroll wheel to zoom in and then do my final position. Okay. I tend to like a little bit of a three-dimensional view. This is a good start, but with FlexSim, we're actually going to model the, a working process. So this isn't, you know, we're not, the intent here is not to just create something that looks pretty. You know, that, that, okay, look, I've got machines in place and this is how they would be organized. We're actually trying to create a functional system. So we need to do a couple things to get there. First, we need to define the path for the material to flow. Yeah, we've sort of created a logical order here, but, um, but we haven't set any rules for the system to follow. So, so uh, there's an A and a Q up here. So I'm going to refer to these for a moment. So for the this first option is for making connections and the Q is for making or for disconnecting things, cutting connections. So that there's three options. I can connect objects, I can connect center ports, or an extended connect. And I'll be quite honest with you, I've never used extended connect. I quite honestly don't even know what it's for. Um, so the two principal ones are connecting objects and connecting center ports. So the objects, think of it as the material flow path. Um, so if, and in our case, this is what we want to do, right? Material is going to come from our supplier and through our process and out. So we want to use this uh, connect objects mode. My preference is to use the shortcut letters rather than uh, clicking on this when I, when you click on it you move into sort of permanently into connection mode and then you have to select a disconnect and notice how my cursor changes if i hold down the a key 
I move into this connection mode, you can see a little chain. And if I let go of the A key, I'm out of connection mode. This is, I, I find this is a little more functional. All right, so in connection mode, if I hover over any of these objects, there's a little yellow kind of bounding box that shows up um, that tells me that that object is selected. So I want to make the connections in the order that the material flows. So I'm, I'm going to connect the supplier to this inventory, but I don't want to, I can't click the inventory first and then back to the supplier because the material flows from the supplier to the inventory, right? So um, choose your, the first um, uh, part of your flow path. Then if I come down to the queue and you can see when I'm on top of it, it lights up with this yellow box. That's what I'm looking for. And there's my first connection. And you can now see um, that there's a black line that's now connecting my source to my first inventory location. All right. So we want to carry on and do that for our whole little system. So I'm going to come back and hold the A key. Now I'm going to connect the Q to the processor. And I can keep going, right? I'm still in this connection mode. I'm still holding the A key down. So now I can go to the second queue, to the second processor, to the third queue, and to the sink. And this is why I like this. I can now just end the connection mode by releasing the A key. All right, so now I've connected everything. Um, and one of the kind of the fun things I like about FlexSim is without even any more work, there's the defaults are good enough for me to be able to now run my model. So to do so, we need to go back up here and I'll just find out uh, this set of keys up here. There's, I'll start with the run. So if we wanna run the model, we use the run key, we can stop the model, reset, resets the clock back to zero and resets the model. We can skip and fast forward and step. I don't tend to use those, um, but you feel free to sort of play with those once you have a model, you can see how that works. And you can see here, this runtime, 7 a.m. Uh, today's date. If you remember in the original screen, this is what we defined, that my shift or my day or my simulation starts at 7 a.m. And, and it's chosen today's date. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click on the run. And you can see that the, uh, if you come up here and look at the time, it's marching forward. So it's currently um, counting up in time. Now, if you notice, it's moving fairly quickly. It hasn't been a, a real minute or a minute and a half since I started this. It's It's been less time, but I am currently running at four times real speed. That's the default that FlexSim uses. And you can, this is another beautiful thing with FlexSim, is um, you can run these simulations at real time, four times speed, 10 times speed, 100 times speed, 1,000 times speed, um, you, so you can make an entire eight hour shift go by in moments. You can also slow it down. You can have it run at a quarter speed or something like that. If you want to really pay attention to how your model is running and what's going on. All right. Um, there's some pull, there's a pull down down here. So you can always quickly go back to um, a one time speed. You can use the slider. You can type in a custom amount here. Um, the other thing that I like to do though, is a little sh keyboard shortcut is the control and up arrow. And if you do control up, notice how the time doubles, control up, doubles, control up, doubles, 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 and control down conversely cuts them in half. So I find this is a, if I want to speed things up, I can Right, with, with a few simple clicks, I can get things going quickly. Then I can start to get motion going. And then 
now that I've got material coming into my system and I got something to see, then I can slow it back down again. All right. And remember, I chose to run this in minutes. So things aren't going to happen in seconds. Things are going to tend to happen in minutes. So at about 64, right, it's effectively a minute is passing every second. So you can see it's 815, 816, 817, right? About a minute per second. Okay. And so this is, for me, kind of a nice way of viewing things. All right. And so you can see material has arrived in the queue. It's come from this source. It's being processed, goes to the next queue. And when it's done here, the second process um, runs. That goes to this queue. And then because there's no time to wait, the defaults are that there's no reason why this material sits here. It gets immediately sent to the sink. And the sink is designed to exit material from the system. It disappears, right? What we've demonstrated already is the power of FlexSim over traditional sort of value stream mapping, everything from whiteboards to using Visio or Excel or um, some other kind of layout, graphic layout software. By defining the connections, we can actually make the system run. So now we have a working value stream, right? And it is actually taking material, passing it through, doing its thing. Inventory is moving, growing and shrinking, right? And, and we can actually see how the system operates. Okay, so um, this is about as far as I wanna get with the first tutorial. This is just to get you up and running. Um, so come on back and I've got more tutorials planned where I will talk about um, selection of the processing elements and tuning your model and all kinds of other cool things that we can do with this software. So thanks very much. Uh, join me in the next video.